In this video, I will be showing you how to safely remove the heavy-duty coil spring out of a centrifugal casting machine. And I will also be showing you how to remove and replace the upper and lower ball bearings out of the same machine. I've been having some weird bearing noises. When this thing spins, it, it makes some funny noises. The clicking is actually okay. That's supposed to be going on but uh, there's some kind of grinding noises and stuff sometimes. Also, if you look really closely right here, when I turn this and release it, you'll see that this thing is actually uh, moving back and forth. It's not supposed to be. So I'm gonna take this thing apart and replace the bearings in it. You've got three screws on the side right here. This thing right here should just slide right off. Make sure that you grab these two pins right here. They're just gonna fall out somewhere. We'll save those for later. All right, just a couple taps with a hammer and that pin is actually already coming out. Just make sure you don't hit the threads because you could uh, damage it and try to lean something against it so that you don't bend this thing. And I can see tons of rust down in there. Also on the ball bearing, I can just see tons of just muck and rust. So that's gonna be a, a really good thing to replace. I gotta figure out how to get my mandrel out. I've got uh, the one bearing out and I'm gonna go ahead and replace that one. But first, there's actually another bearing at the bottom of this, directly in the center and it's underneath this spring here and underneath the gear. Uh, unfortunately, there's no way to get to it from the bottom, so we have to take the spring out. It can be a little bit tricky, but I think I have devised a way to do it. These little inserts that you have for the bottom of this, go ahead and put those back in here and also put your stopping pin back in here as well. And you're gonna wanna kinda very carefully lay it down while plugging up those holes to make sure that they don't fall out and just kind of release it like that. And so when you spin it, you'll hear that clicking. Literally those things are falling every time it goes up the gear because it's a curved gear right here. And then when you turn it the opposite direction, that's when it catches and that's when you start to coil the spring. So what I'm gonna do is put my arm back on momentarily. Like that. Now I'm gonna attempt to take the spring out intact. Basically, I'm gonna try to clamp something on it to keep it sprung uh, while I take it out, replace the bearing, and then put the spring back in. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cock this a couple of times. You wanna kinda keep pressure down. I don't think it'll, it'll pop up or anything, but just in case something happens. Um, that was maybe like one or two turn, or maybe two and a half turns or something. Uh, but what you can do, just as if you were casting something, you can plug this hole right here. And it stops the machine. I'm going to basically grab a chunk of spring, uh, maybe like seven strands. But I'm actually going to skip the first coil around here. And the reason is because there's a little, uh, like... I guess you'd call it like a, a nipple or something that's inside the metal right here. And it's poking through a hole on this. So I need to be able to grab that and push it forward to get it off and then it'll 
pop out again, but it's just the it's just the one layer that I'm not gonna grab. Made the outside wall parallel, just like the inside teeth. And I'm hoping that it's not gonna pop out or anything like that. It'll just kind of slide in there nicely like I want it to. With the, uh, within the second layer. As I said earlier, I'm skipping the first strand that's on the outer wall. That's great. I've got to kind of angle it sideways so I can uh, have clearance over this. And as soon as I have everything uh, released, at least as far as the gear, I'll go ahead and straighten them up and hammer them back down. And I think I, I said earlier that it's about an inch tall or an inch and a half tall. So this isn't like some little pull cord uh, spring. It, it's a much more heavy duty than something like that. So. Wow, I just released it and I probably turned it less than half of a turn and it's already loose. So that tells me that these vice grips are really holding on there. That's awesome. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. All right, so you'll notice right here, this is where the little uh, thing is right here the little pin that it catches on and there's a slit about this long and this this part of the slit on this side is bigger than the part on this side so I actually have to push the coil this way and then pop it off I don't know if you can tell, but that's actually working. I'm actually almost all the way at the end just by kind of sliding it over. And I'm actually all the way at the end. I slid that thing all the way over. So now I'm gonna try to grab it on this side. All right, so I've got everything spun in a direction going that way. So the bigger side of the hole that's holding this thing on is um, on the, the side that I want it on. This one right here is not actually clamped down all the way. It's, it's not squeezed, it's just stuck in there. So I'm gonna make sure it's, it's nice and snug right there. And I'm gonna clamp down on this one. that Tornado. Mm -hmm. hey, look, this looks like okay so right now I have everything clamped on and you can see how loose it is which is good because now I can actually twist that freely So now I've also clamped it on the back side of that to actually pull it off of the stud that it's on. I'm going to go ahead and take these brackets off. I'm going to try and... Uh, See if I can wiggle this thing out very carefully. Yeah. Um, gosh, you're feeding them too much. I'm gonna have to edit out all this background conversation.
Now this gear is incredibly sharp, so I'm gonna be wearing leather gloves just in case something does pop out. And there we go. So there's my spring right there. And everything is perfectly intact. Hopefully I'll be able to lay that back in. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and replace the bearing and get this thing back in there. So you can kind of see how thick this thing is. Uh, that's probably an inch and a half tall. And the thickness of it is is definitely thicker than some, you know, pull cord in a lawnmower or something. I mean, this thing is is incredibly powerful. So I'm really glad I was able to get that out and I can actually already kind of wiggle it back in like that. So I'll be able to pop it out from the back. As you can see, there's no way to get to it from, from the bottom. Oh, that was incredibly easy. I didn't even hammer on it. Here, these are my two bearings. The smaller one is the one that goes on the bottom, and the bigger one is the one that went at the top. You don't need to put any oil on the outside of it or anything like that. It's They're made to fit exactly in here. You do want to clean it out really well. So I just kind of wiped it through and it actually looks very clean down in there. What you want to do is you want to lay it down to where it's perfectly flat. Don't hit the inside rim because you could potentially uh, disalign the balls that are in there. Very carefully, I'm going to hammer on the outside edge only so I don't touch the inside. All right, so I got that bearing down in there. You can kind of see along the edge here how close it is. That's exactly how close it was beforehand, and it looks perfectly even. Now this is gonna go the inside of here like that. And it'll actually only go so far. So you're gonna wanna grab your pin next. Here's the bottom one right here. This was the smaller one. Part number for this one is 6200. And uh, the other one, I don't think I mentioned earlier, was 6201. Now this one, I remember I just kind of laid it upside down and it just kind of fell out. So I don't think I'll have too much trouble with this one. Yep, and that one just kind of pops right down in there. Now you should be ready to put your spring back in. You got that hole right there that I have clamped down on either side. Go ahead and lay that side in first where this little nub is. Carefully lay it down in there. And make sure your gear is center like that. It, it kind of falls down into place. Try to push this side that way to get it as close to the nub as I can and I'm gonna release the last plier that I locked, which would be this one. All right, so as I said, you're gonna to wanna to lay that side in first, right there, like that. Make sure your gear is centered. Let's put one of my brackets on just in case this thing decides to, to pop up. I know I'll be safe. Now, even if this thing pops up, um, I should be nice and safe. You know, it's not gonna, you know, flip out or anything crazy like that. All right, release this uh, locking set of locking pliers right here. And hopefully it'll expand a little bit and lock on. Yep, I can see right away. It's it's directly over that nub, exactly where I want it to be. I 
And with that right there, it really jumped on and all my pressure is back right here. So I'm back where I started when I had these two unlocked. And you saw right there, it jumped again. And this right here is gonna kind of be the moment of truth. Now to put this thing back together, you got my pins in there. Go ahead and stick your rod back right there. You're gonna wanna line up the hole that's down in there to the rod right here. Gotta kinda press it down pretty hard. 